Hey class, Lieutenant Commander Strupek here, making the series of videos. This is for Chapter 4. Um, we're using the front of our whiz wheel to solve for true airspeed. And um, if you haven't already done so, you need to read Chapter 4 uh, and, and sit through the class first um, because you'll get a better understanding before going ahead and looking at this thing. This is more, this video is more for your reminders how to use this thing. Uh, I'm going to show you where everything's located uh, and how to spin it up, okay? All right, so you have um, this section here. Uh, this is where you'd line up your calibrated airspeed, which is in knots, over pressure altitude, which is in thousands of feet. So these values here, this 5 means 5,000, this 10 means 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so majority of where you're going to be working is probably in this general area here. Most planes don't fly higher than this. Okay, so if you're operating over here, you're a spaceman. Okay, so anywhere in here, you're flying too high. This is in thousands of feet. So remember again that these numbers are probably where you're going to be. This is 10,000, 5,000, 15,000, 20,000. So somewhere in here. Okay, so... By understanding that, now you know that, okay, these values are really close together. So between 5,000 and 4,000, you have basically a millimeter there to work with. It's not very much room. Okay, so you need to you do the best you can try to find, you know, try to find these values as you calculate them. Because um, you guys know that you're going to get uh, questions that make you convert your indicated altitude into a pressure altitude. So if you have a, a or a calibrated altitude, which is, basically calibrated for installation error, uh, using that altitude, correcting for your altimeter setting. So less than add, greater, subtract. Uh, the difference between uh, whatever your altimeter setting in 299 or 2, um, and then you're going to apply it, and that answer is going to be your pressure altitude. All right, so then you basically put your calibrator speed over your pressure altitude, whatever those two values are. And once those are locked in in here, uh, then you can come over here and get some more answers. So we know that we need to find, uh, say you need to find true airspeed, and you also need to find Mach number. Well, once you set up your calibrated airspeed and your pressure altitude, I can come over here. I'm going to actually pass over the true airspeed section here and go over here to what's called the Mach number. Okay. Why do I do that? Is because I don't need temperature to calculate Mach number. Once I've calculated pressure altitude. Um, and calibrate airspeed, my Mach number is solved because it doesn't use um, temperature. Okay, so uh, anyway, so whatever whatever we spun up over here, as long as it's still, you know, set, you go just go over here and your Mach number is going to be right at this carrot. Okay, so you're just going to read that off, and if you need to, you can just put this little red line here, and that'll help you. I'll just show you exactly where you're at. Um, if you're not sure what that value is, you're like, oh, it's uh, 30.3, uh, 0.4 maybe? I don't know. You just move this over a little bit. Uh, okay, so this is a 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. So this is 0 0.30, 0 0.301, 302, 303, 304, 305. So I know that it was something like that. Okay. Um, you definitely obviously don't want to move this thing around when you're trying to solve, but you know I'm just trying to show you that uh, sometimes you gotta you gotta know what these values are prior to spinning it up or how far away they get, um, so you don't necessarily have to because it's hard to bracket when you only see one value, right? You only see the point three. You're like I'm not sure what's over here. Just know that okay, each one of these tick marks is a point zero one value. All right. All right, so next um, we're going to do the true airspeed. So how do, how do you use the true airspeed? Well, just understand first, and I'm going to show you something, that there's a um, where you need to find the answer is in this box here. Okay, It's the intersection of these temperature lines. So each one of these lines is a temperature line. You can kind of see that. There's a zero temperature, and, and there's a little um, line here for negative 10 negative 20, 30, 40, and there's negative 50 here, as you can see, comes down here, and it keeps going up, keeps going down. And the opposite is also true. So plus 10, 
20, 30, 40, 50, all the way to 100. Okay, and so you're going to put that, uh, you're going to line up your temperature line. Um, so if it's like negative 40 or negative 43 or something, you're just going to imagine that there's a line right there. You're going to follow it down to get to here, the mock spiral line. What is a mock spiral line? Well, it's just uh, it's how they calculate the true airspeed, but the, the, the line itself spirals. Okay, so I'm showing you right now. So just keep your eyes on that the white box there in the line in the middle. As you can see, as I'm moving around, the line is getting spirally, right? It just spirals right off the screen. And then it starts again at the bottom. And then it starts to spiral up and up and up and up and up, okay? So that's mock spiral line. So it has to be the, mock, the intersection of the mock spiral line and the temperature line, whichever temperature that you're using. So say we're using, like, again, negative 40, negative, let's just say negative 40. Well, negative 40 is a line, so we'll use that negative 40 line, and we'll line it up with the mock spiral line. You can see, there it is. I will go ahead and mark it for you. All right, I'll use a green marker. Right there, you guys can see that. So that is the intersection of the mock spiral line and the, and the temperature line. That's where you need to find the intersection. Why is that important? Because these mocks, these temperature lines, they start way wide, right? And then they come back in, um, and they continue to come back in until they reach the base. If you're only um, finding the intersection at the base of the temperature line, you're actually not giving yourself enough space here. So think about how many degrees you would be or not to be off if you use the base instead of the mock spiral line. Okay, um, so you can you can see that in this picture. So between the two. It's about, um, you have at least uh, three to five knots of difference there. And that, that could mean the answer, it could mean the difference between the right answer and the wrong answer, okay? So again, make sure it's the mock spiral line in, the, in this middle of the, of the, of the uh, box, and then the temperature line that comes down, okay? If you don't have a temperature line because it's between two temperature lines, so let's say it's negative 43, you're just going to find the imaginary 43 line that goes through the temperature line, just like that. So if it's negative 43, there it is. And then you read straight down, and that's your, your true airspeed. So you read your true airspeed down here at the bottom. Obviously, you get a bracket, so 400, 450. So it's each one of these big tick marks is 10. So that's 10, and that's 15. It's closer to 15, but it's like a, a 14. So... Um, 414 knots is the true airspeed for this scenario. Okay, so that's how you do that. Um, do we use any of this other stuff? Well, no, we don't. Okay, so so don't worry about calculating um, the density altitude, the true airspeed, or the pressure altitude down here, or the temperature rise, any of that stuff in here. All that stuff is, is stuff we don't use in this class. Um, Use the calibrate airspeed over pressure altitude. Make sure you have those before you go ahead and put those in there. Remember that you're going to you may receive an indicated airspeed, and so you need to convert it to calibrate airspeed using your test set that's on your sleeve. So on the other side of this sleeve here, you're gonna you're gonna get the test set, and um, you make sure you calculate it, and then um, calculate your pressure altitude using indicated altitude in your um, altimeter setting, and then those two values line those two up. Get your mock number and then use the temperature line, the mock spiral line to get your true airspeed. Okay, sounds simple. Uh, and once you do about a handful of these or so, it does become more simple. And now you're just trying to get faster, right? So understand for comprehension and then do questions for proficiency and speed. All right, I hope you're having a good one. Um, and stay tuned for more videos on the whiz wheel.